In Greek mythology, the personification of memory was a titaness named Mnemosyne, spelled M-N-E-M-O-S-Y-N-E. -E. She was the daughter of Uranus and Gaia. She was also, thanks to her nephew Zeus, the mother of the muses of epic and lyric poetry, history, music, tragedy, hymns, dance, comedy, and astronomy. I have to imagine those were some fairly lively family dinners. Leaders and artists alike were said to owe their artistic insights and powers of speech to Mnemosyne and her daughters. It makes sense, then, that a company making writing instruments might, upon reflection, want to name itself after the Titanus. Early in my reviewing career, I purchased a pen from a U.S. manufacturer spelled N-E-M-O-S-I-N-E. -E -E. At the time, I assumed that the similarity of the names meant that the pen manufacturer was also pronounced Mnemosyne. As in so many other aspects of my life, I was completely wrong. Nemesine is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and has been making a range of affordable pens for the last several years. They have also made something of a name for themselves by offering a range of affordable number no. 5 and number no. 6 steel nibs, including difficult to find nib gauges like 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter stubs. I've already reviewed one of their all metal pens, the Fission, and I liked it. This season, I'd like to take a look at a couple of their other offerings, starting with the most affordable model, the all acrylic Singularity. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pen Habit. I am glad to have you back for yet another pen review. Now, I always like to scatter in different kinds of reviews as I'm doing pen reviews. I like to go for some of the expensive pens that I really like. I also like to go after some of the less expensive pens that aren't necessarily what I'm going after anymore in my collecting career, but I know that there are a lot of people who are new to pens and who are looking for things and who look at some of the amounts of money that, that we who are crazy pen collectors spend and think, there is no way in hell. Um, and, so, and so this is one of those pens. I want to start off by thanking Nemesign for providing this pen for review purposes. They actually didn't even provide it for review purposes. They wanted some feedback on the pens, and I figured, well, while I'm here, I'll go ahead and do a review of it as well, and then I'm going to be giving it away probably at the end of the season when I do my big end-of-season giveaways. So a huge thanks to Nemesign for providing this pen for me. So... Start off. This is the Nemesine Singularity. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, I used to think this was pr pronounced Nemosyne, but because I am a lazy, lazy man, I never bothered emailing the company to ask. On Reddit, someone posted that they got an email response from the company saying that it's pronounced Nemesine, um, or Nemesine, or, you know, it's, it's not Nemosyne, like I thought it was, named named after the, the Greek Titaness. Uh, in any case, here it just comes in a plain white box with the Schwarzschild radius equation. Um, don't ask me what it means or what it's used for because I studied musical theater in college. As I have often said, I can count to eight, but only if I start from five. And five, six, seven, eight. Okay, <laughs> um, you know, very plain packaging, which is great because this is an in a, this is a, an affordable, inexpensive pen. Um, you don't need a lot of fancy packaging. That's just a waste of money. So the pen comes clipped to this little cardboard. Oh, can't see it. it comes clipped to this little cardboard sleeve here. Now there are a couple of different varieties of the Singularity. This is the clear acrylic version, and it is completely clear. I mean, it is just absolutely see-through clear. Uh, very, very nicely polished and cleaned up. In terms of high quality, this is a very high quality affordable pen. I've, I've reviewed a lot of affordable pens that are maybe not so great quality. This is one of the higher quality affordable pens that has crossed my desk. Um, it's, it's not a particularly flashy design, but it's a nice design. I like it. So it's got kind of a, this... Um, cone, like flattened cone finial up here on the top, then a chromed band with a very streamlined, you know, clip. It's very springy. It's not super strong, and it's, you can see the profile here. It's kind of attached via a pivot point up there. Um, completely clear 
cap, but, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, you can see there's kind of a little step down and some inner inside supports right here, which are visible through the cap. Then there's the Nemesign um, cap band toward the end of the cap there, and that's all it says on the cap band. The pen tapers down a little bit, uh, just a tiny, tiny flare out, it looks like, or it feels like, based on the inside design, and then another flattened cone. And inside the flattened cone, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, there is a little um, injection molding mark. Um, so clearly this pen was injection molded at some point. Uh, now, and that makes sense for a pen in this price range. Injection molding is a lot more cost effective than having to turn a pen on a lathe. Now, a lot of pens, even some pretty expensive pens, I'm thinking of the Platinum 3776 or the Sailor 1911, are also uh, injection molded. And usually injection molding is done by uh, taking two molds, holding them together, injecting some plastic, and then opening the molds and the parts fall out. Uh, what that does is it results in a line um, where the two molds come together along the side of whatever it is that was molded. Um, I don't know if that's the method that was used for molding these pens. If it was, that line, that those molding marks were polished off perfectly. Um, they are, it is absolutely smooth. You cannot see any molding at all. Now it's entirely possible that these were molded in one piece or, you know, molded in a different kind of mold. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I don't know how all of that is done, but uh, I will say that however it was done, after the molding was done, the finishing work is superb. It's in really, really good condition. Um, the cap comes off in one and just shy of one and a half turns. Uh, these are quad start threads, meaning that there's four starts, so the cap can go on four ways. Underneath, you've got a black plastic section here, um, concave section, pretty comfortable, no hard edge here on the end, and then the threads. Now, there's no such thing as a perfect pen. Um, I've said that several times. I will probably continue to say that. Uh, there is a what I consider to be a design flaw on the singularity, and that is the way that these threads were done. Now, you'll notice that the cap is not super long, um, and so in order to make room for... Oh, Sorry, you can't do this. I've, I've repositioned my overhead camera, and so I'm, I'm not used to, uh, let, let's do this. I'm not used to how high up on the paper I need to be to show you this, but um, so the cap isn't super long, so you'll notice that in order to fit the nib in there, uh, the cap, if, if the threads were to be on the, the barrel, the cap would have to be probably another half an inch longer. Um, so what they did to compensate was they put threads the threads for the cap on the section, they also put the threads for the barrel on the section. Now, initially that might seem like, oh, hey, that's kind of a neat idea, that, that'll work. The problem is, and I haven't had this happen, but I could see how it could happen, um, and I have seen reports of it happening online, is if you have threads uh, for both the cap and the barrel on the section, if you go to twist the cap off, there's a good possibility that the barrel will come off and leave the section in the cap, which can't happen if the threads for the cap are on the barrel. Um, so if for some reason you got ink stuck in here, you know, kind of dried in there, if the friction coefficient on the threads between the cap and the section is higher than the friction between the, th the section and the barrel, then when you're gonna to go to unscrew it and the barrel's gonna come right off and then you're gonna to have to try to figure out a way to, to get that undone. I've seen that problem on a couple of other pens. Uh, the Tactile Turn Gist is one of them and I don't remember if the review has already come out or will be coming out, but I'll talk about it on that one. Um, I would have preferred the cap be just a little bit longer and the threads be on the section. Um, that way you don't even run that risk because I'm a, I'm a pen fiddler. I sit in meetings and I cap and uncap my pen non-stop and I could see that being all kinds of a problem for me. So anyway, aside from that, take the cap off here. I've got the black plastic section, got this really nicely engraved butterfly design, or not engraved, but stamped butterfly design on the steel nib. Um, you know, plastic feed here. So this is a steel nib. There's nothing too terribly special about it, uh, aside from the fact it's got a nice design on it. But there, it's a very 
very nicely behaving steel nib for a pen that costs as little as this one does. Uh, in the hand, and I'll, I'll get to the writing in just a second. In the hand, it's um, it's comfortable, a little narrow in the grip for my taste, but not too terrible. Um, it is uh, a pen that I like to post, though. It, it posts pretty deeply, and it's wonderfully balanced when it is posted. It, it you know, it doesn't get too long. It's just really, really nicely balanced when it's posted. Um, so this is a pen I generally prefer to write with that way. If I had chosen the nib to get on this pen, I probably would not have chosen a fine um, because this fine nib is, in fact, quite fine. For, for a Western-style fine, it's quite fine. It's not quite as fine as a Japanese, but it is still finer than most Western fines I've used. Um, the nib is quite smooth. The tines are in perfect alignment. I haven't had any problems with ink starvation or... Um, hard starting, skipping, there's no baby's bottom on the nib. Now, the nib does tend to have a little bit more feedback than I would prefer. And that's 
either because the nib has not been polished as much as I would personally polish it, or more likely because this nib does tend to run a little bit on the dry side. This is a great nib to use if you're using inexpensive paper, um, because the, a fine nib like this that runs a little bit on the dry side will actually, um, will, you know, this is a great student note pen because you can use the crappy paper you've got at school and because it's such a fine line, you should be able to write for several days without having to worry about running out of ink. Um, you can see the wetness here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not terribly wet, uh, but it's, you know, it's a nice smooth writer. It's very comfortable in the hand. Um, were this my pen, I would probably wet and wetten up the ink flow just a little bit, um, which should be a, a fairly minor thing to do. Just spread the tines a tiny bit. That would also increase the line width, but it should get the ink flowing pretty smoothly. Um, oh, also really quickly, in an earlier episode of Currently Inked, I called this Bondi Blue. Of course, I was pronounced it's Bondi Blue, named after Bondi Beach in Australia. Pronunciation people are still out there in force. <laughs> um, line variation, there's, this is quite a rigid nib. Um, you can push a little extra bit of ink flow out, but not really any uh, line variation to speak of. And for a reverse rider, it's actually quite a good reverse rider. Um, it's still a little feedbacky, but pretty smooth. Nice extra fine line, a little more sensitive to the um, to the rotation of the pen. If, you, if you're if you a pen roller, reverse writing may not work all that well for you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice pen. Um, this is, you know, I, I've, I've talked about this several times before, but I've gotten people a little up in arms in the past over the fact that I don't particularly care for most of the highly recommended entry-level pens, like the Pilot Metropolitan, the Lamy Safari, they're generally not my cup of tea. There's, there's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly fine pens. They're just not pens that I personally enjoy. Um, so I'm always on the lookout for alternatives that I, I can recommend. And the Nemesign Singularity is one that I would have no problem recommending. I've used three of their pens now. All three of them have been very well made. All three of them have been very consistent writers. A touch on the dry side, um, which for people just starting out sometimes is, is what they like. They're used to writing with ballpoint pens or finer lines. So that might be something to help people get started. Also, people starting out a lot of times don't want to spend lots and lots of money on new paper until they get more seriously into the hobby. Or they can't because they, you know, they work in an environment where they have to use what's available to them. The Nemesign Singularity comes in a couple of different models with a couple of different price points. I believe at last check, uh, this model, the clear acrylic model, was on sale from 25 to 20 bucks. Uh, $20 for this pen is a steal. Um, this is just as good as any of the other starter pens out there, and I would hazard to guess better than most, simply because it's pretty clear to me that Nemesign does some quality control on their nibs and on their, um, on the pens themselves. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but one of the things that makes some of Nemesign's nibs unusual is that they come in, in nib sizes you don't often get, especially their 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter stub nibs. So if you like stub nibs, but you think the 1.1 or 1.5 you can get from most manufacturers is just too big, um, try these nibs. You can buy the nibs separately. I think they're around $10, so they're, they're pretty inexpensive. So if you wanted to get one of these pens, you could get three or four different nibs and try them out and see how they write. Just swap them out. It's pretty easy to do. So all in all, I consider that actually a really good value for a pen that's only $20. Um, it's, it's a really nice pen. It's well-made. The nib writes nicely, although a touch dry for my tastes. Um, but you know, it's lightweight, but it's still robust. It feels solid. I got no complaints about this pen, really. So I think that should do it for this review. A huge thanks to Nem Nemesign for sending this pen out for review and giveaway. Like I always say when I talk about giveaways, just keep your eye out on facebook.com uh, slash penhabit or twitter.com slash penhabit or on penhabit.com itself. You can use a feed reader like Feedly to subscribe to the blog, and you'll get notifications whenever I do a new post, including all of my um, pen giveaways, which I do through Rafflecopter.
So that should do it. Don't forget to check out uh, the Pen Habit store and check out the uh, Inky Fingers notebook line if you haven't already. It's got some great paper in that notebook line. And we will see you here soon for another review on the Pen Habit. Have a good one. Bye.